I mean, it was brought in to try and help the game, and it's getting out of hand. It genuinely is. I've had a few hours and I sleep to think about the situation yesterday over the Sheffield United game. And to be honest with you, everything really goes out the window when you get such bad decisions, drastic decisions like that, ridiculous decisions like that um, in football. And I really don't know how we move on from this element. I said yesterday when we were doing a show with Russ that you had an opportunity to create something that could benefit the game. And what's happened now is we've got TV shows dedicated to how bad VAR is. You've got Sky Sports, you've got TNT, you've got all the reputable media outlets bringing in ex-professional referees to dissect the decisions that were made at the weekend. And most of the time they admit they were wrong. Or most of the time they admit there's contradictory rules within the Premier League. It's ridiculous. And those two decisions that went against West Ham yesterday, honestly, go down as potentially some of the worst I've seen. If you think back to Balbuena being sent off all those years ago during COVID, um, it obviously was never a sending off. Never a sending off back then. Tommy Suchek against Fulham, never a sending off. However, they were given at the time. And what happened? Nothing happened. Nothing gets happened. They, 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 they take it to the PGM OL. And what they do is they apologize and they rescind the yellow, sorry, the red cards because they're straight reds. But if they're double yellows, they can't rescind them, of course. And we, we didn't get away with them, but it's just ridiculous. Whereas the result yesterday, those two decisions mattered. Those two decisions clearly mattered. And at such a pivotal time, I've actually, I'm, I'm dis. Disjointed. I'm discontent. I'm discontent. This. I'm disjointed from football. I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm in two minds. I, I should be celebrating West Ham winning. I should be celebrating West Ham winning with a not convincing performance. Let's not take away from the fact that we did play bottom of the table, Sheffield United, and it wasn't our performance to write home about. I'm fully aware of that, and I, the the, the players and the boss will take full responsibility for that. But we were in a cusper of winning the game. We really, really, really were in a cusper of winning the game, and then. The ball gets punted in. I mean, we'll, we could talk about the, the red cards in a moment. And in actual fact, Russ will talk about that later on today. But um, the, the moment when the ball is punted into the box, Ariola and Ollie McBurney go up. Ollie McBurney leads with his arm. And his elbow smashes Ariola in the face. I mean, it's the most clear cut. It, 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 the, the player, Ollie McBurney, is a dramatically a head taller dramatically than Ariola when he's in the air and he fully connects with his face and what makes this whole thing farcical absolutely farcical is the fact that once VAR supposedly checked it they gave the penalty and then told the goalkeeper to go off the park because you've taken a head knock so West Ham were then forced to make a substitution it's honestly, I've never seen anything like it. It's really ridiculous. It's bang out of order. And it's not about making excuses, but I think sometimes no matter the style of game, no matter who was, you know, if anyone was playing well or not, if West Ham were not playing well, it doesn't matter when it comes down to decisions like that at the end of the game. Then what happens? They score from that penalty and the ball then gets punted up the field. West Ham go on the attack and Bosch. Their player, Sheffield United defender, illegally rugby tackles Jared Bowen without looking at the ball. Without looking at the ball. Chest height. Chest height. Illegally, remember what I've just said there. Illegally rugby tackled. We're playing football. We're playing soccer. A sport to use you with your feet. You rugby tackle below the chest. In rugby, it's allowed you go... Anywhere near the chest, it's 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 not allowed. It's a, it's illegal 
But in football, apparently it's allowed. Apparently you can go and do this. And the referees are bottling it. The referees are bottling it. And they should be held ashamed. Like, I can't get my head around how you can be in charge of a game at the highest level when it means so much multi-million pound product and you're putting a team of people that are so incompetent. It's so incompetent. And it's ruined the, a, 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 a game. It's ruining the game. It's ridiculous. Even when I go back to when West Ham scored that goal against Arsenal, and for me, the ball was in, and I think they've proven now that the ball was in. But the scenario around it's fucking ridiculous. It takes so long. Surely with the money that's in the sport, they can get things a lot better. Surely they need to bring the relevant people in. This rule book has gone out of hand. Honestly, the football rule book has gone out of hand. And it's so disheartening. It's so disheartening. I'm honestly, I'm 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 I watched the game we were watching the game, we'd done the review yesterday. I was really struggling to talk because I was so pissed off. And what's gonna happen now? They're gonna come out and they're gonna apologize to West Ham. Thank you very much for the apology. Thank you. Not the most sarcastic apology I've ever, ever um accepted. It's the most ridiculous situation. Let's come back to the game for a second. Listen, I'm disappointed about how we played. I'm happy about some couple of players' individual performances. Good to see Danny Ings play actually quite well. Unfortunately, not to bag a goal. would actually do what he's designed to do. Bit of um, interesting tactic change when you bring him in a deeper role and, and, and he seemed to get really involved in the game. Um, ben Johnson, I did not see that one coming. I don't know who saw that one coming. I didn't know he had the ability to play in the middle of the park, but that seemed like a bit of an ingenious tactics, whatever you want to say, whoever decided that, he was getting his rigorous instructions on the sideline, and I seen him about to come on, and I thought, okay, here we go, we're going to do the Safal, Sufal and Johnson switch, but no, Courtney comes off, and he goes right into the middle of the park, and he makes a difference, that's what's crazy about it, Ben Johnson made a massive difference, it was quite interesting how much of a difference he made, he had the energy, he had the desire, he won the ball, he actually played really well on the ball, he looked like a proper player in the middle of the park, he looked like he's played there before, he looked comfortable in that position, and he needs to be given a lot of credit for his game, and I have to be brutally honest with you, he, he, he's been stepping up in my genuine and humble opinion, I think he's been stepping up for West Ham. I think he's been doing a good job as of late. And he's been trying to prove his worth, I suppose, in a West Ham shirt. And I think he's done it. He played 20 minutes. He um, had 27 touches. He was 94% accuracy in his passes. So he had 16 passes and 15 of them completed. And um, had one shot off target. He was successful with 70, actually 85% of his dribbles in the game. Um, he won a quarter of his ground jewels and he made one clearance but he held the ball really well and we were struggling in the first half to even put passes together in actual fact David Moyes himself even came out and said listen uh, you know I can't talk about the situation about VAR but what I'll talk to you about is the fact that West Ham did not play well and it's one of the worst first halves he's ever saw I think I've saw worse first halves but what was interesting was it was really we were naive in our approach to the game. We couldn't string two passes together. It was a team of players that hadn't played together and really, really it was highlighted. It really looked like that. Um and the desire to win the ball when Diaz went and scored that goal was really disappointing because it was such a good save. Zuma obviously off the pace. And no one came to win that second ball that gave Diaz the chance to come in. And he had the desire over the player that tried to put his foot in on the ball and put the ball into the back of the net. But Fair play to Ben Johnson. I think I think he's done enough to warrant a contract. Um, apparently, West Ham are offering him a contract. He expects a bit higher, or his agents are saying they want a bit higher, and West Ham are willing to play lower. But I really do hope Ben Johnson stays at West Ham because I do think he's got a bright future. I think it's a bit dis... I, I feel sorry for him a little bit, the way he's not been treated as a person, but as a player. He's been expected to play in so many different positions. And he is a right back, and I think he was pivotal. And one of the a good reason, one of the reasons why we did so well before we qualified for the Europa League, because he was getting a bit of consistent time in, in the team at right back. And I think consistency is key for him. But what he's now this means is he's going to get a bit of game time because Sufal's been sent off 
and we'll miss the next game. So Ben Johnson will be catapulted back into the right back position. Hopefully by that point, Alvarez is back, but you can see we miss Alvarez dramatically in the middle of the park. And I think that's what's interesting when you think about the link to Calvin Phillips. Like when you lose someone of the quality of, of, of Alvarez, then you really need someone else to step into that place and we don't have that. And maybe Calvin Phillips could bring that. And then if they're both fit, then you've got the options. You've got options there. Essentially though, do you know what? The game was spoiled. The game was spoiled because referees absolutely poo-pooed themselves. He didn't know what to do. He didn't know how to get the best out of the game. He didn't know how to get the best out of the tools that he had that aided him. And he will walk away tonight doing one of the worst jobs I've seen in football, in the Premier League. And I'm not exaggerating. I'm not exaggerating. And I think I'm more than entitled to have my rant about this. I'm more than entitled to make this game about the decisions at the end. Because people will turn around and say, we should have done the game. We should have got the game done in the first 90 minutes. But you get games like this, whether you like it or not. We've beat Manchester United, we beat Arsenal, we beat Tottenham, we beat Chelsea. And you kind of not expect West Ham to step up to the plate against the bigger teams. But usually when it gets to the bottom team, they're the banana skins that West Ham are used to. And I'm not happy about the draw. I'm not happy about the draw. But we should have won the game. We should have won the game 3-1. Not draw the game 2-2. Um, I don't know how where football goes from here, to be honest. Actually, I do know where it goes. It won't go anywhere. It'll just stay the same. And it'll be ridiculous, corrupt, whatever. I don't know what you call it. Um, I don't know how you resolve it. I don't know what the best answer is. But something needs to change and it needs to change soon because decisions like that are becoming like very, very often, very, very often. And you'll tune into your TV tomorrow and you'll see all the information about these players and these decisions made from referees, you'll see them all. They'll all come out in abundance and they will um, apologise to say, don't know how they didn't take it to the decision and, and give it. Anyway, I'm going to lose the plot, so I'm going to let you go. Join Rusty B later on for some more content. Come on, your hands.